The deals dashboard is where you're going to spend 95% of your time inside of Pipedrive. It's where we see our deals in a graphic way based on a tile. It's where we see our stages. That's our holding tanks. That's waiting for either something for us to do or something for the client to do. We see as our deals come in, the standard process is perhaps Bruce Banner and Tony Stark filled out a contact us on our website, or they responded to a Facebook ad with a learn uh, more button, or they got a, a bulk email with a button on the bottom of it, a call to action that says, uh, subscribe to our newsletter or, or fill this out to schedule a meeting to speak with us. However, they got into the new lead in process, they start out the clock starts, so our KPIs begin. The clock has now begun on the Hulk's deal. We, As we move a deal from left to right, our deals can be triggered different things. So as I move uh, Bruce Banner to this nurture client, that could have triggered Bruce to get a sequence, which we talk about in the pulse section of Pipedrive, our follow-up sequences. Bruce could have gotten set up for a series of 10 different emails. As we get into our follow-up, as I get into our contract sent, whatever your process is, we want to set up these stages as your holding tank, as you're waiting for something for us to do or something for the client to do. Usually a verb, contract sent, payment pending. Like what is gonna, what are we waiting to have happen? And how do we know? We see the 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 micro down here. So this is the macro. This is the micro. We, we know that this one is waiting for a follow-up with the new lead in three days. Bruce Banner is waiting for a discovery call. Bruce Wayne is waiting for us to call Batman tomorrow. So each of these different deals has a follow-up activity. Remember, Pipedrive is activity-based sales software. On the right side, we're looking at our demo pipeline, but we have multiple pipelines that you can have inside of Pipedrive. I've seen uh, clients with 10, 15 different pipelines, depending on maybe a region, depending on how they do things. Typically, if the process is the same, we want to keep it in the same pipeline. So even if you want to say, hey, Ethan, we're used to doing things based on East Coast, Central, and West Coast, and I want a pipeline for each, I would really ask the client, why? Why do you need three pipelines if the process is going to be the same? Because we could easily label and segment those deals in a much easier, cleaner way than giving them three separate pipelines. If you want to have great KPIs, you got to start with a great foundation. So on our view over here, we have our most common view. This is our pipeline view. It's our graphic tile view where we see each of those deals. We have what I call the stack of pancakes view. This is where you can do bulk things. You can list your all your deals. You could grab them together. You could do things together. You could schedule activities. You could add them to follow up sequences, which as I mentioned in the sequencing in the pulse video where you get the training on that, you may be able to add all these folks to a 25 email sequence whatever you'd like. Moving on, I could do things on the right side here as I could change the value of the deal, I could change labels, I could change status, I could lose them, There, the, a lot we could do, but that is meant for doing bulk things. So the stack of pancakes is for bulk. The forecasting, I don't see a lot of clients use it that often, but it is a tool in which you could forecast if you had projected sales, you could begin to forecast and see as you get history in your system, it can build out. So if you're Johnny the pool cleaner and you say, here's how many deals we did, if you have pipe drive for two years, it would be able to accurately forecast what kind of business you're going to do in each month. Finally, we have the archive tab, simply our lost deals. They're, they're in there for 60 days and they're archived before we really officially delete that data. So into our deals dashboard, we have, let's go to our deals details screen and let's look at Bruce. As I look at Bruce Banner's deal, I can see the pipeline, all the information about the stages, how long they've been in there, the, most importantly, the one and the lost buttons. So if I have a, loot, a lost, I want to know the lost reasons. I want to be able to pick and choose all these different reasons on why from a drop down list and mark it properly lost because maybe we want to remarket to that individual down the road based on their lost reason. It's a lot easier to bring in a lead that already knows about you that you lost than it is to bring in a brand new stranger. We see who owns the deal. That is the sales rep. We see the title of the deal. 
We see over here our main summary, which we have full adjustability to. We could change where these are, what these fields are, what the labels are. When, If you want to see things like standard, like the expected closing date, maybe I don't even need to see that in here, or I don't want to use the, the sequencing function. Maybe you want to remove that. Maybe you're a B to C type company and you don't have an organization, so you could remove it from the summary. And so you're not going to have it. Maybe I'm selling, maybe I'm a real estate agent and I'm going to go directly to the person itself without an organization. All customizable. On the left side here, these are what we call sidebar selections. So we have the ability over here to manage those and turn them on or off. As you see, we have our details of our deal. We have a standard four field um, section called the source, which Pipedrive meant to be the lead source, but honestly, it's four fields, it's a lot of homework. I always recommend my clients turn that off and just make a standard lead source field in your deals and go with that. We have the person that's attached to the deal. Again, if you're B to C and not B to B, maybe you don't even have an organization, you can turn that off. Maybe we're a business that doesn't deal in the products database. I discussed that in other videos on why or why not you'd use products database. Maybe we're a services company. We don't need to have that on. Overview, again, I could build you a great KPI tile that says the full picture of all of your deals in the pipeline. So perhaps you don't need an individual snapshot of how old is this Bruce Banner deal? How many activities have they had? All of that is what you see in the overview. The participants is where you add additional people. So Pipedrive was set up that the standard deal has a primary person, Bruce Banner, and a primary organization if needed. The, if you want to add additional people, that's where that participants comes into. So if you're working a deal that has in your company that has maybe three, four or five different individuals, it's a huge big dollar deal, 100,000, maybe something like that, you have additional participants. By adding those participants in, when you get over here to the right side to where you're going to work this deal and you're going to email them, the, all of the individuals that are listed as participants will be listed on not only the activities. So say I schedule a meeting, it's going to make recommendations and say, hey, who do you want to, to have in this meeting? It's going to say Bruce because he's the primary. It's also going to say all of your participants. So that's going to happen on the email side and the activity side. On the Smart BCC, not many clients use this, but this is for those folks that have multiple deals for one individual. So if old Bruce Banner here has five different deals, perhaps they are, I had a client recently that was in painting, and they have one project manager that may have five different locations. So the deal is the location, perhaps one, two, three, four Park Avenue. The project manager may have five different deals. That's where that BCC comes into play because if you're going to have an email about that specific deal, you need to have the BCC of that specific deal so that you can see who it goes to and Pipedrive can marry that email to the, which one of the five deals that that person can have. If you only have one deal with your standard uh, setup, then you don't need to even deal with that. But I like to train my clients on all of the bells and whistles of every button. Next up, if you're using Pipedrive's add-on feature of campaigns or the projects, you've got some analytics here. You can see the project that it's tied to. So after the sales process, after I close Bruce and I get him through the whole process here and I win the deal, I can then see uh, as the sales rep, I could see how the onboarding team is going about building that project. Finally, you could see the invoicing if you connect in QuickBooks you can install it here you can install quickbooks and that'll uh, light up that feature of the invoices where you can see how many invoices bruce has and what he has left so controlling these sidebars is important uh it's another important personal preference feature that each of your different users in pipedrive needs to log in and change i've got many different deals that i've got in here i've also got i've collapsed that sources remember i said really to hide that it's got these fields that you've got that you can't control. It's also got a set, set of, of uh, answers here on this dropdown that you also can't control. So you could just make your own lead source field. Here, same thing with the person, same thing with the organization, all customizable. Same thing with our products. So all of these tiles, there's that smart BCC we talked about. All of these tiles all build in and tell us if Bruce said no and he didn't consent to an email, he said it was spam, it would show you here. A lot of clients don't need to see all of this. See how much I have to scroll down to see all of that? I'd really like my sales reps to focus on just what they need to do to close the sale. 
So I'd come in here and train them to turn things off, start switches and start turning them off. I'd close all these out if I don't need them. And I just leave the target person, the target company, and the target details about that deal, three of my, my three databases, right? Deals, people, organizations. Now I've got them all right there and I've got a lot less real estate used up. Finally, in this training on the deals dashboard is these tabs here. So as we build out, we could type in notes, we could type in whatever we want, we could tag people in our company. So we could tag different individuals on our team. When you tag them and you hit save on a note, well, they just got an email that says, hey, you just got tagged on the Bruce Banner, the Hulk deal with a link to that deal so they could quickly uh, see that deal and click on it. Next up, activity-based sales software. Here's where you could create custom activities and you could to make it specific for your process. When you wanna build out great KPIs, you get granular with these activities because then you can really say, well, how many discovery calls did this sales rep make? Or how many project work calls? Or how many meetings? How many build reviews? So how many pipe drive trainings? I have quite a built out pipe drive. I've been here for this company for 10 years. As you can see, I have many activities built out. Inside of my activities, I could choose the person. So back when I mentioned the participants down here or just the primary point of contact, Bruce, I could add them right here. It would select Bruce. See, likely link to activity. Recommended. If you've got participants, it would recommend them all. I could put a physical location. Pipe drives tied into Google. So I could put 1234 Park Avenue. And I'm in Florida, so it's going to target me as close as it can get to a 1234. But it's geo-targeted, and it's, it will go in somebody's calendar. If they open this up on their phone, it would go right to their car and send them right to the right spot. When I talked in other videos about the pipe drive marketplace, that's where these integrations can come into play about Zoom, Teams, or Meet. You can integrate them so that you can create inside of your CRM, your quarterback on your team, you can create this activity, schedule Bruce Banner a meeting. It would go to his email, give him the location, tell him if it's Zoom, tell him a description about the meeting. It, see, as you see, description, sync to your calendar and visible to the invitees. Or I could make visible notes just for me inside of Pipedrive about what I want to talk to Bruce about. So one private, one public. Down here is who is it assigned to? So maybe I'm the administrative person for my company and I want to schedule everybody. I can assign them appointments and meetings or follow-ups. Maybe I don't want to schedule Bruce, but I want to put a follow-up and ask the sales rep, hey, what's going on with this deal? I can schedule them an activity to follow up with me. Next up, this is a sunsetting thing. This is the calls. Pipedrive got out of the calling business. If you want a calling software that's awesome to integrate with Pipedrive, I would go with Just Call. You can find a link on my website, ewcrm.com. Get your free month. Give it a try. This button's going to go away. Next up, you have your email integrations so that you can choose your your signature, you can choose everything that goes in there, your calling software. As you see, I'm connected to Just Call, so it shows me uh, as a click to call, it would dial that number. I could choose whatever templates that I want inside of here manually and quickly fire away and send it something to Bruce, or I could type something in. I could include my fields, I could include a meeting scheduler. I could attach files. I believe you're allowed an enormous uh, 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 storage space with Pipedrive. And you could save lots of files. You could also tie in external file savings like Google Drive or Dropbox or Microsoft OneDrive. So depending on what you use, you could drag and drop something here and it could save redundantly in multiple places. I've talked a few uh, different videos about this creating templates inside of your documents here. That's your main menu for you managers. That's down here on documents where you would create those templates for your team to easily grab and pick here. I could pick a one-time document or I could pick a template. If you need to do anything complicated, any quotes, anything with the complicated signatures, I recommend you replace this with PandaDoc, which is a third-party software. They will charge you more money, but they are phenomenal. And again, a link on my website to try that out for free. Go ahead and take a look. Finally, the invoicing is only a QuickBooks only feature. If you use QuickBooks, which a good portion of the world does, you can integrate it here, but your sales reps would then have the ability to send invoices directly from here and see when those invoices get paid. 
Finally, on today's deals dashboard, I'm going to teach you about the AI. There's a lot of AI that they're building out here. You can summarize this deal. It will, uh, when I accept these terms and conditions, Pipedrive will automatically read all of the emails, read all of the activities, read all of my notes, and they will build it out into a summarized. I don't have enough data here, but when you build this out, it will give you bullet points and say, Bruce Banner is looking for this type of a service. He's been called this amount of times. It gives you a full dossier of what's taking place with your deal. Okay, that covers a full uh, detailed training on the deals dashboard. Remember, always work the deals. Don't work the contacts directly. Work the deals dashboard. Work the dollar sign. Spend 95% of your life in the deals dashboard.